I think that Sony should really look into what Star Wars has been doing recently. Oh. They turned to The Mandalorian yeah. and other shows. And these shows were so much better than the movies that we got. And so when they put that attention into the shows, we had so much variety and a bit of everything there. And it was done with love. <laughs> Welcome back to The Break Room, everybody. I'm Zach Huddleston, and joining me on this exciting and informative Monday episode of The Break Room, I've got the always talented, always excited Maude Garrett. Oh, that's who you were gonna choose I out thought of it was us gonna be two, me. so did I. And, and the equally always talented, oh. always excited, Sometimes Brandon Barry. Flip, 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 flip! <laughs> uh, coming up today, we've got a little bit of Joker, Fali Adit. Um, oh, some Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, it's coming out this week. Uh -oh. um, and we've got a lot of Sony talk. We're talking <laughs> Madam Web, Silk, Spider Society's writer room. Um, Mwah. What's that? Noir. Noir. I thought you were choking on something, Mod. I didn't he know. Thought, um, he, he thought a kookaburra had made it in the <laughs> office. Mwah! <laughs> 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 um, Mwah! Yeah. I feel and, so and, and no, like, it sounded uh, great. It sounded great. And even more importantly, Spider Man 4. And maybe some interesting news about that. So uh, we're going to get into all of that on today's special headlines <laughs> episode. Hit that beautiful oh, headline. Yeah, beautiful. Still <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. So let's, uh, we, we got some new photos from uh, Joker 2. Folly I do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's our two stars. Um, uh, director Smashies. Todd Phillips. That, are, is that a prison bars? Yeah. Can you yeah. go back to the second one? Like oh, is that definitely sure. prison bars or? Oh, for sure. Yeah. It could be a window pane. What do you think Joaquin? But that, that means there's you, no glass in the window how pane. How does Joaquin though? smell? What do you think? Mm. Does he smell good? I, do you think, is he a method actor? Have you interviewed Joaquin? I have. Did he smell? Um. You don't have to say. No, I don't think so. Blink twice, blink twice if he smells. I is, wasn't close enough to. Is he a strange person? Yeah, he's actually really introverted. Yeah. Like yeah. exceptionally introverted. I'm still mad about Napoleon. So I can't talk You're about mad this in an about unbiased the film? way. Yeah, I'm yeah, still yeah, okay. so mad. And working, you know, someone said that it was okay for him to be an American playing Napoleon Bonaparte. So I'm just like, mm. yeah, I don't want mm. okay. I just have a, yeah. Interesting. I will uh, shed that skin soon, maybe. <laughs> but for now, I am coated in distaste. Oh, okay. A, thi a thin I've, coat of distaste. I've been to Napoleon's tomb. Okay. That's exciting. Yeah, it was exciting. That's Is that in really France? cool. Uh -huh. Okay. Say when. You know what he said? He said. Say when. It was it was like this. It was just real tiny, and we all handed it around, uh, and we said, "Miss oh. you." I, I like that, especially when it's um, you know, when the bakery's done a good job. <laughs> a Napoleon. I thought you meant because he got cremated. Um, <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> the bakery's uh, done a good uh, job. But the cinematographer for Joker Two, uh, Lawrence Schur. Uh, who also shot the first Joker, um, said recently that the movie uh, just has music in it. Music's a part of the movie and the characters, but I don't know if it's technically a musical, which well, is interesting. shooting it. He should know. He should know. <laughs> yeah, when he's like, I don't know if it's technically you a musical. You know what else has some music in it? La La Land. That's Chicago. Oh, interesting. Mean Girls, well, the musical. Well, like, <laughs> does the, do you think this means that there's going to be musical sequences possibly, probably taking place in the characters' heads? Maybe. Right? Sorry. Um, but there will also be long stretches of the film that are just dialogue driven. I, th I think they sing out loud, probably. I mean, he did his little dance down the stairs. That wasn't in his mind. But he, he wasn't was... singing. No, but I mean, he's halfway well, there. That's why it's the sequel. They are expanding. Yeah. We started with the dancing, and now we need the singing. And yeah. that's why Lady Gaga is in here. Yeah. Now, I said earlier before the show that I think that I could wreck this sequel with four words. Okay. And looking at these pictures, those four words are a Joker is born. This They're going to have a baby? This is, or no, a this star is, is born yeah. with a Joker? Oh. This is going to be a star is born, but with not Bradley Cooper. So so eventually, and this is almost like the Harley Quinn animated show, you're saying that Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn will become a bigger villain and then Joker will get mm. uh, jealous of that, become an alcoholic, and at the award ceremony for villains, piss his pants. That's that's <laughs> somewhat of what I'm saying, but I'm also okay. just saying it's going to be the same movie, but yet with more darkness. In the Arkham, the <laughs> Arkham. Nice. You do it. Get all the way. Get all the way. Yes. <laughs> get all the way. We've reached the limitations of my musical <laughs> ability. Well, now, real question. Um, 
Brandon, you're more an expert, certainly in musicals, to, to qualify as a music, like a movie uh, can have a musical sequence that does not make it a musical. Sure, sure. Name me one. Movie that has a musical sequence, but That's it's not, not a musical? musical. Yeah. At the at the end of uh, a lot of Fairly Brothers movies, they yes. sing. Uh, the 40-Year-Old Virgin, they sing The Age of Aquarius, a song from Hair, a musical. That okay. movie's not a musical. What about Team America World Police? Doesn't that have a musical sequence? I would sequence call in that it? a musical oh, okay. movie, though, right? Because there are several songs okay. in, that, Fair. in that movie. Fair. Mm -hmm. There's America, Fuck Yeah. Some There's is, yeah. everyone has AIDS from yes. the the in in universe rent movie I'm event. I'm so lonely. I'm so lonely. Okay, <laughs> yeah, never mind. That was about a bit far more racistly <laughs> sung than well, that. Well, but but if this, yeah, I it forgot is. about that one. That's a good. One. Um, yeah, that, that is interesting. So, would you say if there are multiple secrets, let's say I think three, three songs, three songs. If there's in your three musical. songs that Gaga sings in this movie. Right. And we or know anyone sings. Jo Joaquin has I don't done think a, he should sing. He's he's done the I whole Johnny Cash walk thing. The line. Yeah, he, he can did. sing. He did. Um, if they sing songs that we hear out loud, mm -hmm. that this counts as music. I think my yeah my over under is three. Right? Three. Okay. If they hit three, we're we're in musical territory. Yes, Evan. Evan. Uh, well rounded mom saying five hundred days of summer for a movie that has a musical sequence oh. in it that is not a musical. Yeah, that oh, just. But has they like, didn't sing it. They just danced to a song. True. I guess it's like a dance number. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. that's a good mm. point. Good point. Yeah. Do you consider like an American in Paris a show about the, where they're mostly dancing? Ferris is that a musical? Ferris that's right. It's a lip yeah. sync. It's technically a lip sync it's sequence, dying. but it is very musical. Yeah. 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 Okay, um, okay. This is great, and I don't care. I think it's gonna be great no matter what. I also don't mind if it's a full blown musical. I they're guess just, the, I think he's being weird because Hollywood is very strange about yes. their musicals. Lately, now. they don't want to call hit, anything a musical. Hit musicals. Wonka just crossed 600 million worldwide. That mm -hmm. is a hit by any standard. They refuse to acknowledge that that movie is the a musical. The Color Purple, <laughs> which was, you know, originally a book and then a movie by Steven Spielberg and then a musical on Broadway. And then they took that musical and put it back in the theaters as a movie. They called it like a bold retelling. They wouldn't even yeah. call it a fucking Same with musical. Mean, mean Girls the Musical. They yeah. wouldn't, they didn't put any songs in any Wicked, of advertising. Wicked's uh, barely got, you just got, ah, at the end. Can we hear that one more time? Wow. Ah! <laughs> What's that song? <laughs> That's uh, Define Gravity, obviously. I sang it Just the opening note she hits at the end of the trailer. Yeah, wow. so it's interesting. He's probably downplaying it. But also, I guess another thing, me as a, a Broadway novice, to technically shows where everything is sung. That's mm. an opera. Well, yeah, that's right? more like like Jesus Christ Superstar, right? That's like a rock opera. Where there is no spoken dialogue. No, everything yeah. is, is a song. Phantom of the Opera. Is Les Mis that? Yeah, Les Mis is, yeah. is cover to cover singing. Okay. Yeah. You want me to start it? Yes, nope. please. Look We're down. Okay, look next up. <laughs> you're standing in your grave. Now bring me prisoner 24601. Your time is up and your parole's begun. Do you know what that means? No. Yes, it means I'm free. Can we do a, a break room opera at some point? Where yeah, we do sure, all the let's do it. We do all the hits. <laughs> all the headlines. Oh, I've got song. one song that would be mine. Poor Unfortunate Souls on The Little Mermaid. Oh, okay. There is, I think I've said this before, and I don't want it to be my quote, but there is inside of me a very large octopus woman waiting oh, to get okay. out. Oh, okay. Damn. Print it. Damn. Print it. Put it in your Tinder profile. Um, hey, yo, yo. Okay, uh, next up, uh, next headline, it's the release week for Netflix's oh. live action adaptation of Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> Um, we were saying it's dropping Wednesday. 22nd, the 22nd of February. Wednesday yeah. at midnight into yeah, Thursday. Yeah. Mm. Um, so Brandon and I are, are, are not well versed in that IP, but Maude uh, and especially I've got Evan this. know a lot about it. I've got this. Um, can you, do you know She's what? She's airbending me. Oh! <laughs> Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. <laughs> Whoa. Evan knows what I'm talking about. I get it, this I get is it. still arguably the best animated series that you can watch. Thank you, Nickelodeon, Whoa. for gracing us with this show. Whoa. M. Night Shyamalan tried to bring it into a movie, and it got, what was it, 5% on Rotten Ooh. Tomatoes critic score? Five, worse than Man and Web? Worse than okay. That's a 5% movie. So This was this was a big show for a generation. Massive. It's of so good. It's such a flawless, wonderful mm -hmm. show. Anyone can enjoy it. And if you haven't seen it, I would start there so that if things aren't as good, you won't be disappointed because you were graced with this amazing. You don't think that's going to build up nope. your expectations too much? No, it will if, if you watch the animated show, it will pass expectations. We have a clip, I believe. Did they just release this today, Evan? This uh, is a of, new clip. Yeah, this is of Zuko and Uncle Iroh. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to how they have done the fight sequences because this was going to be the make or break right. of the show of how you can actually bend the elements. So, do we want to play it? 
There's fire burning. We all know Ouch. that fire beats earth. It was kind of like an animal roar in the fire. Do it. Do it. He's not going to do it. Okay, so what did you guys think of that? Because I've got some cool. I mean, okay. the fire bending is cool. When they pick the rocks out of the ground, that's just like a that's clump of mud. Bending. Or is it a rock? It's earth. It's earth. They're earth benders. So there's a bunch earth. of sand. So you know, okay. you know that there's four nations. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's a fire nation. There's the water tribe. There was the air. What do they call that one? The air city? Air, air nomads. Air, air temple? Yeah, air temple. But like, that's been... Incinerated. It's gone. Except because he's the last he's airbender. He's the last airbender. He's the last airbender. Mm, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, and then the Earth Kingdom. <laughs> phylum. The Earth, Earth phylum. Kingdom. Fa Sing Se. Okay. Um, so what's happening is that the Fire Nation wants to dominate. The Fire Nation wants to, you know, take over everywhere. And so there's there's the warring nations. And then the person who's supposed to keep all the peace is the air, like the, mm. the avatar who can encompass all four oh, elements. Oh, okay. But he's been hibernating for over a hundred years. So while his people have died out, he's just been like chilling. And now that he's woken up, his whole people are gone. And now it's up to him to learn about all the four elements. Um, the movie that M. Night Shyamalan did, that, that wasn't great. Sure, sure. I, I recall like, those events. Subjectively. Yeah, yeah. Not good. I tried to walk out of it, but I was watching it on a plane. <laughs> Hey yo! Still tempted to Watch that it. last yeah. step. It's a doozy. Yeah. Now a little bit of backstory. I read about, about that in the news. Come on. <laughs> they, had to, of... they had to take you to your chair. Yeah, yeah. I'll do it. I'll five percent. <laughs> um, what's interesting about this whole saga with Netflix? They've had the rights, and they actually got the original creators from the Nickelodeon series to come on. Okay. There were creative differences. Those two who created the show walked. Mm -hmm. They have started their own Avatar Studios where they will only, I think, do animated versions and sure. expansions of the show. This live action, they said that they were going to continue in that same direction and not scrap what the creators brought to the table. But I think the big concern is to not do what the M. Night Shyamalan movie did do. Right. So this was like a, that movie was a big learning mistake. Do you see that there was enough difference in that particular trailer to isolate the two? I don't, you know, I didn't, I never saw the Shyamalan thing. Oh. Yeah. You okay. know, what, what do you think was the main problem? If you had to, was it just like the look? Did it not understand the essence? It's like. I what, know people were mad that they said the character's name wrong constantly. It, it's, it's like that what they were supposed to do was written down on paper and mm -hmm. then they ripped it up and made it into pulp and tried gotcha. to build something out gotcha. of it, but it just looked like paper shit. This yeah. is like the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck. Okay, there again. you go. Where it's right like you got works. great, you got a great. Source material, what what the fuck is this? Why is Nickelback singing a song? There's been a little bit of hate already about the show. Uh -oh. I don't know if the sure, creators sure. left long ago, but we're starting to hear the new creators and the Netflix studios talk about what they're gonna do. Mm. And they are saying that they're gonna tweak some of these characters to modernize them in like today's age because soccer, he was a little bit sexist in the first season, gotcha, but that was his gotcha. character arc. And they're like, oh, we're not even going to entertain that. Mm. And it's like, well, some of his crucial growth moments follow that. So to remove that, you kind of remove mm. his essence. And they're also saying, what else were they saying about the show, Ev? There was like something else that they weren't happy with. About the show? Oh, yeah. So one of the things that's interesting is that the animated show, right, it was 22 episodes when it first started. Um, so that's 22 episodes or 20 episodes, half hour episodes. Yeah. Now this is going to be eight hour long episodes. So there's a lot of story that's going to be like trimmed. Oh, uh, okay, there. sure. There's a lot of a lot of charm from the original series comes from like these like side adventures that they're going on. These kind of like limited like things that don't always have to flow into the main storyline as much. Um, wh what do you guys think about like an adaptation that takes something like that, like shrinks the story that much? You know, having not seen it, but like. What is where does that leave you guys uh, about thinking about that kind of thing? I don't mind um, it being broken down into eight hour, one hour long episodes. Uh, I think that understandably, even though there were sh episodes in those series which did detour, detour from the storyline, they were still really good. But you could trim that fat, I suppose. My concern is that I think that this could look like Xena and Hercules with a budget. Yeah, it's tough taking something that looks great in animation and yeah. making it live action. That's always a real challenge, and something and, and Netflix has well, it, bumped up against it, with some of their anime conversions. Especially anime, yeah, yeah, which has a very distinctive 
style often, right? That does not necessarily translate to real world physics. Cowboy Bebop. Yes. Yeah. That's a huge one. Yeah. Um, and then what was the second? One Piece. I thought they did all right with One yeah. Piece. Yeah, and I thought that was pretty well received yeah. by most of the fans. Well, and right? this is like when we talk about, to bring it back to musicals again, if you see like a musical on stage, right? It's a little more amazing and your, your brain fills in the holes and you don't ask of much. But when you put a musical in a movie, and you're on, you know, you're you're yeah. on a real set in a real city or something. Suddenly, it doesn't feel right anymore. It, it, and and um, we'll have much more specific thoughts once the show comes out. Evan, are we? We're going to talk about it on the break room. Folks yeah, that are familiar yeah. with the IP will be talking yeah, about not it. Not Brandon just... and I. Uh, when are we going to do that? I think uh, so. Friday, we'll probably be Great. doing a review for the whole series overall. So we're gonna watch all the episodes and, and get our thoughts on it'll be uh, Jessica and John and we'll, and we'll pull, pull, kind of put something together. We don't know if we'll be live yet, so keep an eye out on the Twitch schedule for you that. You just saw real time that I wasn't invited to it. <laughs> you can turn on. What no, it's time. Time. I mean, you can't come in. I have, you just I have to watch all the episodes yet. as fast um, as you can. I have, I, have a, okay. I have a quick question about the property. Now, I, I'm not that, I, as I said, I'm, I'm not familiar with it at all, but now I have, especially after certain meals, but an air cutter? All right. Is that, all right. Is that related to right. air bending at all? No. Oh. No. Uh, Dash, let's oh. just keep that in. Let's play the second clip really quick. You're let's, part of the problem. Let's kind of uh, juxtapose the two clips that we've seen. <laughs> okay, show us the second one. Oh, yeah, I saw this one. Yeah. Oof. They got Jim Carrey? I mean, I think that's going to be weird. <laughs> What's the tone? Well, that was on Twitter, right? That was to promote the show. I, the one week later, obviously, won't be in the show. But obviously. I like the ah. <laughs> I kind of like that. I say leave that in. Um, it's like a comic book. Uh, this is, yeah. what is it, season two, episode six? Yeah, yeah this is, so this is a moment from the second season that they've moved up. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, like it yeah. will be in the first season? Mm-hmm. Because mm. um, mm. the first season was Mastering Water. The, is this spoiling? Second season was mastering Earth, and then the third I'm, season was mastering fire. I think I think that looked like Count Olaf from Lemony Snicket. Yeah. Oh, it For did sure. look like. Him. That's why I said, did they get Jim Carrey? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that makes sense now. So my that one. <laughs> the my, Rock. Did I just bend you? Yeah, you bended me. Is this bending? I'm bending. Have, have I been bent? <laughs> my one last thought of this is that um, they've said that they're going to bring a lot more attention to Zuko's story. Now mm. Zuko was initially voiced by Dante Basco, who was uh -huh. Rufio. Rufio. Yes. Um, he was always a secondary character because it's all about Aang, the last mm. airbender, and he was sort of the antagonist. And I think that that's going to change a little bit in this show. I don't want to say anything bad about the actor. No. I just am not sold that he can carry that much of the story from what I've seen. That's all. Okay. Mm. What do you think about that, Evan? Agree or disagree? Um, for Zuko? <laughs> I think it'll be interesting because they casted the actors at such a specific age, you know, to be closer in line with like the characters we saw. So there might be some real time growth happening on set and if the series is allowed to continue, you know? Yeah. Um, however, I'll, yeah, that character is really interesting without well, spoiling too much. And, so and it'll be interesting to see how much focus he gets in season one. As a nice transition out of this, tying together our first and second segments, Zuko. Yeah. Danny Zuko. Danny Zuko. Musicals. Oh, okay. Come on. Grease. Summer 11. Grease. Had me a blast. Uh, real quick, we want to shout out our friends at Jelly Bean Planet. Mod just uh, popped a bean out of their Papa Bean container. I've got uh, one of their 42.5 ounce uh, jugs here. Um, we heard from a lot of folks that got some Jelly Bean Planet and shared it with a loved one or yeah. got them for themselves over Valentine's. Shout out uh, our buddy Leo down in Miami. Um, staff member uh, Berg got some for his daughter. A lot of people were tagging us on social media with their pics of uh, Jelly Bean Planet. And you know what I heard universally from all those people? Yeah. They loved them. Yeah. They thought they were delicious. Yeah. Uh, and we appreciate Jelly Bean Planet. Valentine's Day is over, but you know what's right around the corner? Arguably- St. Patrick's Day? Well, that, but arguably the biggest jelly bean holiday of the year. Mm. Sweet Tooth Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Every Sunday is Sweet Tooth Sunday. Uh, but Easter, it's not oh, too yeah. far off. Um, uh, jelly Bean Planet makes all these delicious jelly beans. This one's got 36 different flavors in it. The 42.5 ounce. Um, 36. 36? Well, I've had all us. of them, and I can attest they're all delicious. They, they don't use GMOs or any bad, uh, you know, 
palm oils or, or, or bad things. It's all natural flavors. Uh, you can get a bunch of different sizes. We've got uh, this bad boy sold out on Amazon. You I'll can't take, even get I'll these. Take that. I'll take that. I'll take this Yeah, that's, a, that's a special. Jessica that's... ate all of the white ones. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, they're the ones. Okay, she likes I, the coconut. It's collector's, that's collector's item deal. now. Yeah, yeah. We sold them all out. Um, but, um, oh, Evan? What you yeah, um, I, I just had a question, Zach. Do you think that uh, these jelly beans would still taste good if they're coming out of uh, the Dune 2 popcorn bucket? Oh, no. There's only one way to find out, Evan. Oh, no. Oh, get that you get that thing here. away from me. You can't even get your hand down in there. I know, my hand, I don't have that big of a hand, but it's, look, it's... Okay. Oh, no! Okay, I'm wearing this the rest of no. the day. Zach got okay. his hand caught in the old yeah. Dune bucket again. <laughs> Um, I thought he was just happy but, to uh, see me. Uh, you know, that's why you got to be gentle with it. <laughs> that's right. You gently caress the <laughs> fan worm. Um, to uh, support this show, look, you could just pop this right on top of the 42.5 ounce oh, container. <laughs> now that's good eating. <laughs> support our show. We're gonna be uh, and, so mad at it. Well, to, it was lovely while it lasted. To get a planet, we delicious treat. No, no, no. I, I you know, we make every it. read feel unique. Yeah, um, you this don't wasn't always free, get a free shot. John, uh, we're gonna start making our own uh, buckets, by the way. John, producer John and I have some plans in the works. Um, th there'll be some new Rockstars popcorn buckets. Throw in the chat what you would like to see out of a new Rockstars popcorn bucket. So uh, to support our show and get some jelly beans of your own uh, from Jelly Bean Planet, click the link in uh, this video's description or go to Amazon and search Jelly Bean Planet and all of their great products are listed there. And then we also wanna shout out uh, our friends at Nerd Riot. I'm wearing... Um, one of our Nerd Riot uh, hoodies. There's a card cart. Scar Brandon's cart. got the classic nerd, uh, New Rockstars hey, logo the Marvels, hoodies. The Marvels is now streaming and, and on that, Disney+. And look Plus. what I have. Very topical. <laughs> I've got the Madam uh -oh. Web uh, Stolen Valor. shirt Stolen there. Valor. You get those and, and some great Deadpool Wolverine designs. All of those available at nerdriot.shop. Um, ooh, yeah, including this ooh, new. we love him. Deadpool Wolverine combo face dealie. Um, Wolverine. How many times? Wolverine. You have the Wolverine. meme shirt too. Wolverine. Oh, that's yeah. A, I haven't seen that one yet. What's he doing in bed? Well, oh. it's it's like I'll it's like a, a riff on the Wolverine mm. yeah. meme where he's looking at Jean Grey, yeah. except for it's reversed. And we just put up this Fantastic oh, Four, baby. you know, with some loosely interpolated Joseph versions Quinn of Quinn looks incredible in. Is that him? <laughs> some would say he's yeah. in Fuego. Oh my lord above! His Hot chin as hell. does not look like that in real life. You've got you've dimplified that chin's gear. Um, I now, know a thing or two oh. about a cleft chin. Oh, I have a type. Or two? <laughs> uh, not just one. Uh, let's... You don't like a double cleft on the chin. <laughs> it gets weird. Uh, <laughs> it's not like it's not like camels where the more it humps, you know. Um, uh, it's like let... Thanos. He's got a bunch of clefts oh, on does. his chin. Oh, that's yeah. true. He looks like a cabbage. He's, he's nothing but clefts. He looks like Carlos Boozer's scalp. Nerdriot.shop. Anyways, um, okay, uh, yeah, nerdriot.shop. Let's pivot to my favorite part of the show every week. Is it your favorite? Absolutely, the Mod Monday Minute! Wow, so this is basically where I spit headlines at you. I've only got 60 seconds to get through as many as possible. This is Mod's Monday Minute with Mod. 60 seconds, please. 60 seconds. Uh, Evan, you better be on it's, this. Oh, shit, it's already gone. No, no, it's not even fair. Congratulations to Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse that won all seven categories it was nominated for in the Annie Awards, including Best Feature. Wow. New story. When asked about appearing live action in Star Wars, Cameron Monaghan, who's the actor of Carol Kestis, I believe, in Jedi mm -hmm, Survivor, mm -hmm. said, I don't want him to just kind of show up and stand around and be there. I want him to mean something. For his presence to be significant for the character itself, I butchered that quote. So it would have to make sense, you know, but in the right context. And yet, yeah, absolutely. Um, give him a season. Dude wants a show. Yes. Dude wants a show. That's what he's saying. I'm not going to sure, pop up. I want sure. the whole damn show. Give me a season. Netflix put the entirety of the animated film Nimona on YouTube. What the heck? A movie with a long production past. Give it a watch. Evan loved this one. Can we cut to Evan with a thumbs up, please? Did you watch it already? Yeah, I love it. Loved it. There you go. And then last is uh, promoting Dune 2. Josh Brolin confirms that he's not in Deadpool and Wolverine, but do we believe him? Look, I saw the clip. He's telling the truth. He's not going to be in it. She got you all in it. Okay. Uh, your lie detector was not going on. I looked at the... It was with Collider, with, mm -hmm. a, with a fellow journalist called Frosty, and his first question is, Deadpool 3, are we going to see you in it? And he's like, no, maybe. Uh, and he goes, no, no, no. Oh, I don't know. And then he waits, and the question's already gone, and then you see it clicking, and he's like, maybe. 
and it's like rolling too soon. Like you just you didn't you didn't mm. stick the nerd. Interesting. Mm. Or do you think that's throwing you off? Mm. You do that on He's a good well. actor. He's a very brilliant actor, so I wouldn't. I guess he would know, because like Cable, it's kind of like Thanos, it where he's wearing the gray suit and the, the face camera. He, reflexively, they put a little no. makeup on him, so he I would know. know if he had to be. Yeah, Cable. he has to physically be there. Do we need Cable to come back? We got yes, enough Cable. Yes, I be love fun. Cable. He was great. I'd rather too. him come back as Thanos. Mm. Ooh. Oh my gosh, what if he was both, and then you have this like full. full I mean, he's got to film. He's got to film stuff for this Disney ride. If they're still gonna make that ride, he's gonna have to film Thanos stuff. So mm. just go ahead and do some Deadpool. Wouldn't stuff that like be that. cool if Cable had to take out Thanos, and then he has this moment where he's like, "This feels weird." Right. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> Wink. Um, let's let's pivot. Speaking of winking, uh, let's pivot into the main topic today. So, yeah. Madam Web had a rough weekend at the box office. It was a 26 million? Um, long weekend. Yes. 26.2 million. Yes, against its budget of reportedly 80 to 100 plus million. They're actually saying million. it's over 100 million. Yes. They were saying that it's in the low hundreds. So they have maybe made a quarter. Now, back. traditionally they say, you know, they never report the marketing budgets, but it's usually like the same budget as the movie for some of these bigger movies. I don't think the marketing budget was that big for Madam Web. Though. It was just Dakota Johnson uh, right. plane tickets. And they so only they ever like... put out one trailer. They didn't do two trailers. Yeah. They, they put out the trailer kind of late. Though. They did they do did. a premiere. They had a couple of premieres. She was wearing they a had lot a, of They had an web. ocean spray bottle at some point. <laughs> But like not a ton. I mean, it's always tough to tell in the city of Los Angeles, which we're not in. We're in Manitoba. But if you were to be in Los Angeles, they have billboards up all over the place in LA. But that's not something there's they do. There's a lot of bus ads. I know there's a lot of bus stop ads. For Evan really wants to say Evan something. Evan has that Vanderpump rules. Uh, oh, they have weird Vanderpump rules. Tom rule. Sandoval, <laughs> Pump and Madam Web. Why didn't we play that clip okay, on the break room, what's, Evan? <laughs> what's a weirder partnership? Tell me in the comments below. Okay. Which of the partnerships is like more bonkers and okay. more of a stretch? Is it Madam Web and? Vanderpump, which I've never seen before, mm -hmm. and I don't know any of the saga. She's I have no idea what it is. I've got nothing. Or is it the fact that they got Serena Williams in to do Avatar mm. and the marketing and an ad for that, where she's like with special effects and like stunts? I think I think that the Vanderpump thing is weirder because I believe that Serena Williams is probably a fan of Avatar and like likes the show or whatever like that. There's the, no world. There's in no which... world in which the Vanderpump boys were like. Oh, we love the character also, of Madam Web. So strange. So, like, I, we won't get into it, but Vanderpump Rules, which is not something I watch regularly, but my wife does, and so I, I know all the lore. So, like, the last season, which was by far the most popular season, one of the most popular seasons of reality t television ever, centered around one of the male cast members cheated on his wife with another one of the female cast members, like, over a long period of time. It was revealed. It was called Scandival. They got that guy. One of the most hated people mm -hmm. in reality TV history to do the promo for a female focused. That like, is so the, the cast. Death. The cast of Vanderpump Rules is mostly women, right? And instead they got the cheater dude to do the mm. promo for this movie. That's Very strange. Gross. If I had Madame Webb's powers, I would change so many things. Should we not get butt tattoos? Now that we're in line and uh, talking about the weirdest pair ups, who would be the weirdest person? that Dune movie would team up with to create mm. the most far-stretched campaign out of them. Comment, uh, comment below. Yes. An AI version of Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. <laughs> who's like, who's like, I don't go on the internet, but I love reading books and I read <laughs> Frank Herbert's like, Dune and it really speaks to me. Cause Dune's all about the computers, right? Yeah, he's the like, computers well, that's them. true. In the Dune universe, they got rid of all technology. Yeah, so Ted yes. Kaczynski would be a big yeah, top that's that, right. Top he top probably top does top support top. Frank Herbert's vision of the future. Plus, um, his mind was okay. screwed up by MK Ultra. Okay, let's. Um, <laughs> that's a rumor. <laughs> that's uh, not a rumor. I think it's LSD. He LSD was tested screwed screwed on by mind. the U.S. government. But that, we don't know that that screwed up his mind. Well, that's true. Uh, he was always a loner. Um, okay. Make it big to uh, Australia. <laughs> tune in tomorrow and we're going deep on Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber. Oh, I uh, wish. Okay. Zach, that better be a promise because I will be here tomorrow. Is he still alive? No, he's dead. Brandon's watched multiple docuseries about the Unabomber, haven't you? Dude, I went to the back. museum, RIP, in Washington, D.C. It's now closed. There's a great museum called the Museum. They had fucking Ted Kaczynski's cabin. cabin. The whole cabin. They picked that shit up from the woods and brought it and put it and you could stick your head in and be like, all right, this guy was a fucking lady. Hell yeah. Um, okay, but we want to get back to Sony. Yeah. Okay? And and like, we're not going to dwell on the uh, the struggles, the failures of Madam Web, right? Like, it did not hit with audiences. It did not hit with critics. Uh, they've already 
Well, they haven't announced this, but people are like, oh, they're clearly trying to start a franchise that will not exist no. now, right? They're not gonna, we will, we will see, in my lifetime, I will see a Spider-Woman movie. It will not star any cast member of this film. No. And after seeing the movie, too, I don't think there was anything in the movie that indicated that they were going to do that. Well, they've separated it so much out. So it's like you can just scrap it and it doesn't affect anything else, which I right. think is actually smart now. Yes. It hurt them initially. Yeah, I mean, the rumor was that they were trying to connect that movie to a Spider-Man, whether it was Andrew Garfield or Tom Holland. And then the stories are all that, like they realized that the timelines didn't match up. I don't believe that because I, I don't think you, you go into and begin shooting a movie and then being like, wait, this isn't right. Like they would have thought of that way ahead of time. So I don't know how much stock I put in that story of like, they wanted to connect it to one of the existing well, spider -Man. And let's just talk broadly. Let's zoom out and talk about the Sony right. uh, Marvel universe right now of spider characters previously known as Spumsy. Um, so, this year, we still have two more films mm -hmm. from them, two more live action films. Yeah. We've got Craven, the Hunter in August, and we've got Venom 3, subtitle not yet known, in November. Um, I've got a question about Craven. Yes. How do you feel about that stand standalone movie now that we've seen what Sony's Morbius capable of? Morbius and Madam Web. Yeah. It does not bode well. Does it have the same writers? I know the same writers who did Morbius did Madam Web. I Wyatt. don't think so. I think it is a different creative team. But also, not only does Craven have those two strikes going against it, mm -hmm. it's also a movie that was delayed almost a full year yeah. Yeah. from last year. It was supposed to year. be out last fall, ahead of Madam Web. Yes. And it it, is, Craven is different writers. Different, different writers, writers okay. yes. Um, how much post work are they doing? Because a big thing that they're saying about Madame Web is that the villain's ADRing all of his lines. Yes, yes. yes and it felt like a hacked up, patched together. And a lot of Madame Web's lines are ADR'd. Like, and a lot like, of everyone's <laughs> lines are ADR'd. Um, and yeah. so, like, it, there, there is potential here. Now, we haven't seen anything from Venom 3. Again, mm -hmm. we don't even know who the antagonist or what the subtitle of that or whatever is going to be. But and, and the Venom franchise has by far been the most successful non-Spider-Man Sony most property. successful financially. These yes. movies aren't doing well critically. And nobody is no. nobody is claiming Venom One or Venom Two is like among their favorite films or anything like that, right? There are enough for the fans to keep coming back so far. But we were talking about this. This Sony's 2024 has potential to kind of be the mirror version of DC's 2023. Ooh. Where like some movies that like, I mean, not to the degree, because I think expectations were much higher. Yeah, for Sony's the Flash. still making stuff. Yes, and whatever. And, and you know, Sony, and this is not a secret, right? They are literally the budget superhero studio. Studio. They spend half or even less than half what DC and Marvel yeah. spend on their films. Yeah. Those movies usually cost 200 to 300. Sony tries to get all their movies under 100. So like, it's a different scale. Mm -hmm. They also don't need to make as much money, but they need to make a lot more money than what Madam Web did, yeah. right? And they need to be positively perceived because right. you can't keep pumping out franchise films or well, whatever. And, and right? Sony has to keep making movies to keep the rights to yes. these characters yes. too. Well, so that, that's what we want to talk about. Let's pivot here. Um, Joanna Robinson from The Ringer, um, friend of the channel, said on uh, Planet Money that Sony's deal requires the studio to commence production on a new Spider-Man project within three years and nine months, I love the specificity there, <laughs> of the previous movie's release. Basically, if Sony wants to hold on to arguably its most valuable piece of IP, it must continue greenlighting Spider-Man or Spidey adjacent films in perpetuity. So I guess like I have two questions there. Should they be making movies that don't feature Spider-Man. Yes. Okay. Which what should those movies be? Uh, I don't. I don't know what they should be necessarily. Okay. But I think mm -hmm. the hardest thing for them to do is like Spider-Man, right? They, that's where they struggle. And when they were making Spider-Man movies, the Amazing Spider-Man movies, right? First one well received. Second one big downturn. Oh, and then yeah. they were basically like, we can't. Well, and that, out, that's right? when they tapped out and they asked for Feige to come in. Yeah. And since then, they've had a great track record of, right? of Spider-Man movies. Yes. I think there's a lot of value to the non-Spider-Man movies. In have that, like, you have a you have a up. more open canvas to like make a movie, I, and that's why I think Into the Spider Verse has been so important for Sony mm -hmm. as well because they are setting up a new helm of Spider Man yes. with Miles Morales. They're introducing us to Spider Gwen. They're introducing us to new characters to expand upon. But in this current state, who do you think could hold an entire movie yes. with Sony? And and you know, Sony can keep every three years. That so there was a rumor that came out. Uh, today or, or in the last week 
that they're going to try to get Spider-Man 4, starring Tom Holland, out in 2025. Now, this is a movie that presumably doesn't have a script, has not started shooting or pre-production. Doesn't have a director. Uh, yeah, we, do, we don't even know that John Watts is coming back for the fourth film. There's a lot of, like, competing rumors there. But they want to get it out by the end of next year. So, like, uh, No Way Home came out the end of 2022. Mm -hmm. Um... So this, this would be about a three-year turnaround between release dates, possibly. Now, Sony would be fine if every three years they put out a live-action Spider-Man movie. Every couple years they put out an animated Spider-Verse movie. We don't know if those can go right. forever, but we know we're getting at least one more. What else could they do? Is there, like, filler movies? I guess they can keep doing Venom movies. Is there a world in which a... Um, a, a, a Madam Web, a Spider Woman, a, a, a Vulture, a, a what? Could we see other Spider related characters have solo movies and for it to make sense? I think you could, especially in a world where the general audience understands the concept of the multiverse, right? It doesn't all have to be in like, this is the New York City where the Peter Parker you've seen mm -hmm. in a bunch of other movies also exists, right? Madam Web could have, it could have been a much better movie. Uh, and it could have, People don't know Madam. The general audience doesn't know Madam Web. Even right. a lot of comic book readers barely know about Madam Web right. or understand what the power set is. You can tell them whatever you want to tell them in that movie. I think you just have to make a commitment to it and do it. And tell a compelling story. Yeah, and tell a compelling yeah. story and not hack your story up and sw change it up as you're editing it. I mean, it's the same problem with Morbius, right? Morbius came out over a year after it was finished. Agreed. Now they, that was, they shot that movie up a that bunch. That was COVID related. That was but some also, COVID related it, stuff, it, but it, like, it they were messing good. with that movie yeah. a lot. And yeah. even their Venom movies, they've kind of allowed Tom Hardy to have script rewrites and director's notes. He's and, he's going full auteur on this third yeah, film. Yeah, third he one's like all him, I think. And is directing this third movie. Yeah, yeah which like, is wild. Today's Edward Norton, then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. But nice. I think that's great. Have someone who has passion for the character, loves it, understands it, you know. Empower them. Especially by the third movie. Yeah, empower yes. them. My favorite part of Madam Web was like the end when I got to leave. No, uh, when she's finally Madam Web at the end of the movie oh. and she's in her weird little chair and she's got her weird glasses on, like that was fun. Start the movie there. Yeah. Don't don't make this weird thing where I'm learning about it and like promise you're not, you're promising these spider women in in the trailer Without that are not in the movie. Time. You do whatever you want in the movie. Just have a little fun. Also, let your villains be villains. Stop making these villains movies well, where they're not villains. That's a big thing. So, I, okay. What, go no, ahead. You Mom. go because I'm well, actually going to pitch I, something. I, I I had two little quick pitches. Producer John before we started rolling was saying like. They could pick one of these characters and do like a grounded Joker yeah. style. Go for an R rated. Craven's gonna be R rated, but it's not gonna be Joker grounded, realistic world. I I was saying do the opposite, like you're saying. Let Morbius or whoever be a true villain and have it like Silence of the Lambs style, where your your protagonist of your movie is a cop or right. some kind of whatever, going after Morbius, yeah. chasing this vampire who's out there killing people, right? Like replace Spider-Man with a non-powered FBI agent or something like that. That's a very different movie, mm -hmm. but like that could be a cool story. What was your pitch gonna be, Mom? Okay, so we have an overinflation of villains throughout Manhattan, mm -hmm. right? And I feel <laughs> right. like Rhino never got his time because the movie, right. they introduced him and then they were like, we're not doing a third. Yeah, he had to go be a teacher at a, a, a boy's high school. It's not canon. Yeah, but he became the holdover. He had no weird eye yeah. in uh, so, Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, because Spider-Man kicked him in the face and knocked his eye sideways. <laughs> My pitch is if we're talking about multiverses, let's mm -hmm. explore the multiverse when Spider-Man is the villain. Okay. Or oh. Rhino or Vulture or yeah. your secondaries. I don't think we're done with ele Electro. Electro? I'm okay. done with Electro. Yeah, we're done with Electro. Who, who's some of the Spider-Man villains? Uh, 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 really Scorpion. We're gonna see Chameleon. Vulture, uh, Chameleon. There's, a, lot, there's a deep roster. Yeah. Sandman, and bring back Sandman. And they're all good. Yeah, they're good right? guys. They're, they're good oh, in this universe mm -hmm. and they all have to work together to take down the elusive Spider-Man who's right. actually the villain. Oh, it's like the the, like the Funnister Six. So, and you, you to, to go back through it, I mean, like, um, DC and Marvel are both doing this. DC has Suicide Squad, mm -hmm. where yes. it's like your anti-heroes are banding together to save the day. We're doing it with Thunderbolts with Marvels. I just think that this could be... A lot of Thunderbolts, right? Yeah. yeah. Thunderbolts. Yeah, you just looked at me like, Lord. Oh, no, 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 like, no. I dropped the ball. No, no, you have the ball. That's a Thunderbolt. great... Thunderbolts. I like that. Why can't Sony have their own villain come good story and they're actually the good guys? And, and you could recast all those that you don't need Alfred Molina's sure, Doctor Octopus or whatever. And you could have whatever, like a dark yeah. Spider-Man, as in like, you know. I love that. I think you could yeah. also even... 
again, it, it's hard to make a movie in, in for Sony that doesn't have Spider-Man or allude to Spider-Man. Like, no Spider-Man, and it's an Ocean's Eleven style thing. Those guys are breaking into Fort Knox or something like Love that. It. Like, that would be a lot of fun, too. Evan, what were you going to say? Um, no, I mean, I, I like those ideas. I mean, I think, too, one of the rumors or, or hopes was that Sony would be trying to set up a Sinister Six type thing, but it seems like with all these movies being like, you know, kind Bad? of misses, it's not really going to come together or, you know, um, in whatever they're trying to do. Right. Um, but kind of like on that line, like, do you think Sony needs to like focus itself up? Does it need like a Kevin Feige type figure to yeah. kind of like steer the ship? Because we don't know how, what involvement Amy mm -hmm. Pascal has. Yeah, because right now they're like threefold, right? By all accounts, right, Kevin Feige is, is maybe the creative visionary behind the Tom Holland live action movies. Amy Pascal seems to have the most ownership over the Spider-Verse movies, but of course the creatives there are Lord and Miller. Yeah. Uh, seem to be the, the guiding hands. And then whoever's running the ship when it comes to the live action spinoffs, yeah, the Morbius and the Madam Web, right? Take Who knows? <laughs> um, so they do need, if, if there was one person either to be overlooking all three of those or just somebody to run with the ball with yeah. these live action spinoffs, uh, a fourth finger on the hand are these Amazon shows. Uh, and we have another little news item. I think last week it was reported that um, the uh, Silk Spider Society, the show that was in development at Amazon Prime, that the, uh, the Ankler last week reported that the writer's room was scrapped. They corrected themselves this week and said it was just put on pause. Right. So it doesn't mean the show is done, but most likely they're going to maybe bring in a new writer's room or change some of the creative direction. Uh, a similar thing kind of happened with Daredevil Born Again, right? They kind of got rid of most of the creatives there they brought mm -hmm. in new showrunners we don't know if they're changing showrunners here but it feels like that's a that's a change in direction this kind of thing happens all the time right with projects especially when you're getting them off the ground it's not necessarily a bad thing um there was a bit of contention because it was like during the writer's strike and like yeah. you can't use the strike as a reason to like cancel the show yeah but it was also in the uh, Spider-Verse movies, right? We don't have they haven't really shown Sydney Moon, right? They've kind of keep in that character silk away from that universe, I think because this show was in development. So it'd be strange to just like ignore her completely. They've kind of, spoiler alerts for Spider-Man 2, the video game, if you haven't played it yet, but like towards the end of that, they introduced the character at the very yeah, end, okay. kind of insinuating that's where that storyline could be going. This is what I think Sony should do, right? It's like, stop focusing on Peter Parker Spider-Man as your spider hero in the yeah. movies. Yeah. Choose one of these other Thousands of variants of Spider-Man that not even uh, Peter Parker choose any of them. I mean, like, they've been asking for a Miles Morales movie forever. Like, yes. develop that movie. Mm. I think they're so worried about connecting to the Tom Holland Spider-Man that yeah. they're losing. They're, they're so afraid to make any commitments in any of these movies. There is no Spider-Man as far as we know, even though Vulture's pretty sure Spider-Man got him here or something. And Morbius is like, I don't know. And... Eddie Brock's in San Francisco eating chickens. Like, what's going on? Pick yeah. a Spider-Man. Well, Spider-Person. Sony's big problem is that it needs to be a pillared sort of formation with, like, four key characters that mm -hmm. can do their own thing successfully, but it's more like a tentpole where if Tom yes. Holland and Peter Parker's gone, the whole thing's going to collapse. I think that Sony should really look into what Star Wars has been doing recently oh. because the last three... Trilo the last three movies, which were a tril trilogy, apparently, I refuse to call them a trilogy. <laughs> there were three movies uh -oh. that happened to come out. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. But they turned to The Mandalorian yeah. and other shows. And these shows were so much better than the movies that we got. And so when they put that attention into the shows, yes, they have like a whole entire platform for it that they needed content for. I understand that. But The Mandalorian was so good. And I find that most of their other shows were like good enough to actually carry the entire franchise forward and or fantastic programming yes. but we had so much variety and a bit of everything there and it was done with love which yeah. the movies were not so and, and so like i think that's why i personally am the most hopeful for these prime shows because another show we know that silk spider society is in development some stage and then spider-man noir and we recently got some news that like nicholas cage is considering noir. being involved in it noir, noir. um well and, and here's the thing i think two things are interesting here one, 
Prime has a pretty good track record of pulling off superhero stuff. Invincible, The, the Boys, boys. Gen V yeah. are pretty beloved. They have a pretty good track record. Also, when they want to, they can throw a lot of money at something yeah. like um, Rings of Power. Rings of Power, oh, right? Citadel was like a three hundred million. They will back the truck project. up if they think something is worth it. And like maybe one reason uh, we, we were kind of speculating, and we don't know this for sure, that that Sony has been avoiding doing alternate spider characters and have instead been going after characters like Morbius and Madam Web is that they are maybe cheaper to do rather than characters that fly through the city yeah. and shoot webs all over the place. That is harder to film, that is more CGI, that is more expensive. But maybe Amazon has the money to do that. But what you're saying, I understand that Spider-Man is essentially like a superhero franchise. Like there are superheroes there. But I think what's brilliant is if you're not gonna spend all that money, then change your genre. You oh. can do such amazing storytelling if musical? it's not in a... <laughs> Spider-Man the Musical? Get the Spider I've seen it. It's happened. Oh, yeah, that's right. Turn it, off it, the dark, Turn folks. off the dark, Get baby. you two back on the phone. Tell them, get out of the sphere. We got a new... <laughs> Julie <laughs> Taymor. Uh, anyways, finish your thought, Mod. What were you saying? Well, you don't have to do big blockbusters every single time. Yeah. And then going back to sort of how I think Star Wars is doing a good job of genre pivoting, it's like when you have this many shows or when you have like... When you're expanding in this capacity, you can do a Mandalorian, which is more Western, and yeah. or political thriller. Like, you can completely yes. spin the genres. And I would love to know what Spider-Man could look like with different characters with a different genre. Well, and, and specifically, what Star Wars did when it has worked is they got behind a creative vision. John Favreau with uh, The Mandalorian, Tony Gilroy with Andor, right? And let a seasoned, savvy, smart you know, veteran creator, mm -hmm. uh, be the driver behind a property. Can anybody name the director of Morbius? No, exactly, right? He um, was a nice guy. I saw a bunch of interviews he did, but uh, I can't remember his name either. And even uh, S.J. Henderson? Clarkson. S.J. Clarkson. Clarkson, the director of Madam Web. Uh, I think this was their first feature film. Yeah, it was. Had only done music videos and things like that. Well, like, no, TV, a lot of TV. Were TV, they a part TV. of, like, The Defenders? Um, yeah, she did the Defenders, yeah. Jessica Jones, Succession, um, a lot, a lots of TV single episode experiences. Not sure about sure, and not to take anything away from that person, who I'm sure is very talented, and like the studio did them no favors with how this film was yeah, handled. Exactly. But I think nobody's putting S. S. J. Clarkson on the same tier as maybe a Tony Gilroy or whatever, right? Like people that have created like big, super successful franchise right. entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and. You have to take a risk. You know, Taika Waititi didn't have that track record before uh, Thor Ragnarok. Um, but it does feel like that's what Sony needs right now. Well, and it so also what, doesn't feel like S.J. Clarkson was allowed to do whatever they yes. wanted no, with Madam yes. Webb. It was probably like, hey, we, you, we've changed it again. And they're like, uh, okay. Did you see on the press tour, someone said, I'd be interested to know what the first version of this movie looked like. And Dakota just started laughing. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I mean, it, it is clear that like, yeah, there were a lot of changes made at multiple points throughout the production but of this I, movie. I like, I like kind of mod hinted at this, I think some other things we've said, right? Like steer into series and maybe in the series you find what could be the next films, yeah. right? If Silk is a hit, great, give her, give her a feature, yeah. right? Like if Spider-Man Noir is a hit, maybe that doesn't have to become a film, but maybe that opens you up to other alternate I mean, reality Spider-People. I would watch people. a Sin City, but Spider-Man oh, Yeah, City, oh, yeah. Like, I mean, sure. Spider-Man Noir, I think, is a one and done type. I don't see you building a whole cinematic universe yeah. around that. I think I, I think that that's the show I'm most anxious about because I think the character works so well in Into the Spider-Verse. but small bit. It's, with, yeah. it's the fish out of water. When you're in Spider-Man Noir's world, I don't know how fun that is for uh, hours and hours. Well, I think we can safely say, though, that with two Into the Spider-Verse movies and a third on the way, like mm -hmm. you've done the track record of success, live action Miles Morales. Yes. Play. Or Spider-Gwen. Like, I don't know why Both they're them, dragging Why are those not bunnies? getting greenlit they're right now? They're dating rom-com. Let's well, go. And, <laughs> do we have the, um, Evan, do we have the discussing film uh, tweet that we were looking at on Slack earlier today uh, where it was like, um, so it was just this this tweet that, from- That wasn't discussing film, That was that's like all rumors. Okay, these are just three rumors, and again, that was disgusting film. Disgusting film. That's that's my handle. Um, but like, you know, there's this rumor going around that Amy Pascal, the head of Sony Studios, wants Kevin Feige to get involved in a Miles Morales live action movie. Let's go. The other gentleman who's the he at the head of uh, uh, Tom Rothman. Tom Rothman, who's another head at, at, at Sony, wants to move forward with like a John Watts. Oh, he's the one that wants a John John Watts to yeah. come back. 
uh, for a Tom Holland movie that comes out in 2025, which would be a very fast turnaround. Yeah. And that the third rumor was that Kevin Feige wants to move away from John Watts and start a new fresh trilogy with a new direction. What? These are all three rumors. The sourcing is not there. And like, this hasn't been like in- I just threw my neck. from Daniel RPK. They, so who's okay. had some hits He's on, a scooper, but this isn't the Hollywood Reporter or a reputable source or anything like that saying this stuff. But it's interesting. And I wouldn't doubt if there's some truth behind some of those. I heard that Bob Iger saw the footage for the Moana TV show and was like, this is so good, make it a Spider-Man movie. <laughs> And that's going to be the next Spider-Man movie. Dwayne The Rock Johnson as? It's, yeah, Moana as Spider. Spider Spider Moana? Spider Moana. Spider do a, do a Spider-Man no, in Polynesia. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm down for that. Sure. That's different. I'm, I'm ready for it. But yeah, do uh, something different. I don't want to see another Peter Parker origin story in my lifetime, please. We've, oh. we've had enough. Please. So well, you're only living a couple more I years. I've only got a couple here. more years left, folks. <laughs> Uh, to, to wrap it up here, before we uh, kind of do our little outro, if, if everyone could go around, what's like one thing you think Sony can do that will really course correct um, their kind of like handle on the, the Spider-Man characters? Well, I will, I will, I, I think one thing Sony should do, and this is what I've been saying a couple times a day, start a new Spider-Man universe where the spider person is not Peter Parker. Like, give us just a whole new world yeah. and let your villains be villains. If you're going to make a villain movie, uh, let them be the villain of that movie. The Joker is the villain of Joker, right? In that society. It's that guy. That guy's a piece of shit yeah. and he's a bad person, right? Like, I don't need Eddie Brock oh, as he Venom. Some, he has some pretty good things to say. Don't worry, therapy will I don't need <laughs> Eddie Brock as Venom, like, fighting a more evil symbiote. You know what I mean? Venom's a bad thing and it should be a bad yeah. thing and it should not be redeemed. Craven should not be redeemed. Morbius should not be redeemed. Yeah. Madam Web, I like Madam Web. Yeah. Let her do whatever she wants. I love okay. her. No notes on that. That's, movie. that's Brandon's film. pitch. Uh, Maude, what do you think is the one thing? Focus on television. Yeah. Um, it's less money and you can build a fan base and introduce characters in a way that is palatable. Pop it on Prime and let us all be fans of the anti crime. I just yeah. need it for Ryan. <laughs> I can't stop. Love that. <laughs> and then <laughs> my pitch is like get one top tier creative on board. Wes Anderson. Back up the truck to Coogler and get him on board for a Miles Morales or somebody oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. Go to Jordan Peele yeah. and throw money at him and see what he wants to make, right? Like I that's Donald what Glover would direct it as well. What about yeah. like La Lars von Trier, a Hell very yeah. like no. body horror focused Spider-Man. Anti-Spider? Yeah, Let's yeah. go. Oh, yeah. Anti-Spider! And he's like getting the pincers for the first Yeah, time. yeah, he's got eight legs. Oh. What's happening to me? Oh, baby, oh, I'm into that on. movie. Cronenberg is like almost 100 years old but he's got a couple more movies left in him get him doing a, the fly but it's the spider i mean come Blum, on blumhouse is making 19 movies a year one yes. of them could be a spider-man movie it's yeah get freaking james wan to do like yeah, a, yeah. a a scary yeah, one yeah. hell yeah yes. um okay we just fixed everything for you sony uh you're welcome <laughs> Uh, thank on you. the house as well. That's like right. you can send a check or send jelly. No, beans. you you must send a check. <laughs> yeah. No options. No options. Uh, no also, be you. before we leave today, I want to tease. You're gonna want to watch till the end of every episode this week. Uh oh. Because at some point this week, we're gonna drop at the end of the video something extra special. That's not a... today. If you watch to the end today, I'm sorry, we have nothing special for you. Well, hey, that's but... not true. You've had us. That's right. Yeah. That's all you get. That's yes. a promise from the air cutter himself, folks. <laughs> I've never heard it cutting air. You cut the cheese. You don't cut air. You do have to slice it off so you don't crop dust. Oh my God. What is that process She's an look expert. like? Mott's an expert on this process. Yeah. I've got two do you use fart scissors for that? Or what kind of, what is the cutting? You, gotta, you do, you gotta whoosh, cut it off and then you can keep going and it stays there. What does it look like for you, Evan? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Just take, take, a, take a little scythe and just... A, a little scythe. scythe. A scythe. One of those pocket scythes you carry around. Yeah. He's like uh, he's like death note over there. Sponsor like, from pocketscythe.com. <laughs> pocket scythe. Pocket sponsor the show. Pocket scythe. You know, TSA took my pocket scythe. No. They said I couldn't bring it on a plane. Now speaking of Spider-Man villains, yeah. Yeah, pocket scythe. The pocket, pocket scythe as a as a Spider-Man villain. <laughs> Former TSA agent. <laughs> right, he gets kicked out because he was stealing oh, thousands of dollars on luggage. We go to WonderCon. You can find me as Pocket Scythe. Oh uh, baby. Uh, now, also, actually, that would be it's probably a um, a Wolverine villain at some point. They have all manner of, oh, of dude, uh, no. knife fingers. Everyone's got a knife. Finger. Everybody's and got a knife finger. And he's Swiss, and he was in the army. There it is. I don't get it. That's there his backstory. 
Okay. Does he wear like a, a Grim Reaper hood? Evan wants us to end, but I think we got nine more minutes on Pocket Night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, okay. We're workshopping it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to The Break Room. Yeah. Follow Maude on all the social platforms. You know what's going on with her book club and all her other great work. Is the scythe the round one, or is it the big death? It's the Grim it's the Reaper death. one, right? Yeah. yeah. With, with the harvest. The yeah. round is a sickle, like what you oh, saw on, uh, on uh, I was getting the a Soviet sickle Union the flag. Confused. Yes. Bad, well, yeah. I think they kind of do some similar stuff. They're out there hacking wheat. Or uh, avenging their dead parents. That's true, that's true. Target size? Come on. I understand uh, what's happening. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching on YouTube or on Twitch, and uh, have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.